Hello folks, this is Jose here for another tutorial for WPEBasics.org. In today's tutorial, we will be going over a, a great new program that I've come across. It is called Desktop Server. What this program allows you to do is to quickly create a local installation of WordPress, as it says here, just in just seconds. It's uh, cross-platform compatible, so whether you're on a Mac or Windows doesn't really matter. And uh, it supports Dreamweaver if you if you use it, but that's for the premium version. And there's a whole bunch of other things here that you can read about on their homepage. What's mainly interesting is that you're able to cr create a local installation of a WordPress site very, very quickly. So let's get started on how to do that. So we have to go to the serverpress.com website, and uh, I'll have a link at this on my website, which is wpbasics.org we click on this download button that is right here in the top right hand corner and you'll be brought to this page there's a little video you can watch if you want and here's a huge description of uh, what uh, desktop server is all about and here below it you see you see a comparison of the two uh, the free version and the paid version now the free version is the one we're going to be looking at uh, I guess the main difference is that the paid version has unlimited uh, websites uh, it has, uh, whereas the premium, uh, pardon me, the free one has three websites and the unlimited one is the premium version, which obviously you can make as many websites as you want. And it has an, a few other web uh, advantages, such as uh, easy deployment to a live website, but uh, w we have other ways we can do that as well. But for now, we're going to just cover how to create a local website very quickly. So just click on this, re add to cart. <clears throat> And then it's going to ask you, it's almost like a registration. So just go ahead and fill in your name and, uh, and all that here. So let me just put in this. Put that in there. And uh, how did you select about us? I don't know, say website. And you agree to the terms. Uh, purchase total is zero. And then just click on this button here and just wait for it. So now it's, you've, you've registered to it and uh, it's given you here at the bottom of, um, a few options as to which version of uh, desktop server you're going to download. So you have the options here, like I said. Here's a, the latest version is this one if you're on a Windows, which I am. So I would just go ahead and cl click on this button and it's going to do this so let's click on it go ahead so this, this should uh, begin a download and you can save it to uh, to your desktop and get it started so I'm, I'm not gonna save it again because I already have it saved so let's just close out of here and then we can close out of here and I don't need this either so basically what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a file something like this one here just go ahead and unzip it with whatever unzipping program you have so I'll just go ahead and do this, unzip it, extract files here is what I'm going to do. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do it again. So you go ahead and do it. So once you've done it, you'll have a file that looks something like this, dsl-win-v382. Of course, it's going to be a little different if you're on a Mac, but for the, in this case, we're on Windows. So let's go ahead and click on this button that got extracted by unzipping this. And then inside here, there's two files. So we have this button, install DSL. Go ahead and click on that. Now it's going to give us uh, the option to continue. It's going to prompt us, say yes. And then we're going to accept the terms of conditions. You can go ahead and read them if you want. Let it just your normal stuff. Go ahead and read it and accept it. And uh, then we're going to leave it. Click that new desktop server installation. Go ahead and click on continue. Now it's going to take a little while to install it, so I'm just going to pause it for a brief second. So once uh, the program is done installing, you'll get a message that looks something like this. It says, you, done, you can start desktop server from the uh, XAMPP Lite desktop server.exe program icon. Click to finish installer. So you go ahead and say, okay, finish. Now, one thing that I think should be fixed that they haven't done so right now is that you there's no icon put into your uh, desktop automatically but I'll show you how to do that so just go ahead and click on um, uh, my computer and bring up your window 
then go to uh, your C drive, your C drive, go to Xamp Light here, and then here at desktop server.exe, just right click on it. Let me bring it up so you can see it better. One sec. Right here. Right click on it. And then where it says send to, click on here, create desktop icon. There. So then let's get rid of this. And you can see here we have an icon now. So I think that's an easier way to do it. Let's rename this guy. Actually, I don't like it to say shortcut. Just desktop server. That's all it really needs to say. Okay, so then let's, let's go ahead and open it by clicking on that. So it says desktop server needs to run as administrator on your computer in order to create, modify, start, and stop web services. Would you like to start, would you like to restart desktop server with administrator privileges? Say yes, and then click on next. Then just agree to it. And then uh, let's see, we don't need to do any of these. Uh, you can put it, see here, if you click on airplane mode, that's just, uh, controls loading of external files when developing locally. We don't really need that. Uh, this is a deep forces WP debug, trend false. Um, I, I, I don't really use that. Local admin uh, bar color. Um, I mean, I guess you could use that if you want. Uh, I'll click it just for now, just so we have a different color. And then, uh, but you don't have to. You can leave them all blank, actually. But I'll put this one on just to show you. Then we click on next. And it's going to start uh, web and uh, data services. So I'm just going to pause it while it does that because it takes a little bit. So there we have it. The start web and databases services are done. So let's click on next. And then we're going to create a new development site because this is we don't have any yet. So click on next. And then here on the new site, uh, we're going to give it a name. Uh, let's say my first my Let's say first site. First site. That doesn't look good. Let's just say test site, just for argument purposes. And now take note that it's creating your website on, on this directory under users, under your name, under documents. So look in your documents folder, and then it'll create a, a subfolder under called websites. Under that subfolder is where all your websites will be stored. And this one's gonna be called testwebsite.dev. So go ahead and then create. Let's just pause it while it does that. So here we are, we, are. we got this nice uh, word that says done, means it's successful. So let's go ahead and click on the next button. And now we can uh, go ahead and click on next. Just remember this is the URL we are going to uh, go to and it's gonna install it or, or you can just click on next. And we can go to sites. If we if we ever forget how many sites we have, go ahead and click on that. So let's go to, to uh, website. And let's do now. We're going to uh, begin with the installation. So select English if you're English. If you're another language, well, you know, select the language that you want. I'm going to click English. And then here it's just like a normal install, except. This is going being done through desktop server. So just uh, let's say, my, oops, pardon me. We don't want to put that. Uh, my site. Uh, I'm going to put root for username and root for password just because it's just a dev site and can confirm it because it's a weak password. Obviously, if you're going to put this onto a live site, you'd either want to put a hard password here, but you know, you can always change the password after, and that's usually what I do. We can put in our email, so let's say uh, razor at live.ca, uh, then install. And now the installation should begin momentarily. And here we go. Tell us pretty quickly, it, it, uh, it's been installed, it tells us WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. So let's click on login. Click on root. I mean, type root in. Click on login. And we have our website there. Now, if you wanted to navigate back and forth, you can always go back to this uh, 
you just type in localhost, for example, and it'll give you a list of all your websites. So let's just demonstrate that. Just click here. See, there it goes. So you can view your website, go to your dashboard, and uh, this is the dashboard. You can go to your website from here. Here it is, your website dashboard, I mean. And you can also check out your databases from here if you ever needed to, to, uh, to do anything. So it makes it really, really simple and easy, especially for the beginner that doesn't want to mess too much with uh, other methods. I also do another method, XAMPP, uh, and I have tutorials on that. So if you wanted to check that out, yeah, feel free to do so. But in any case, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, just shoot them down there in the comments section. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.